Yeah, mine's reading a little above that, so I think we'll be good. Yeah, that's a high. We'll be right. good. So what's been up, man? How's it been since you passed through Denver? Denver, uh, Jesse made a surprise trip through Denver. I got to see him in person last week. Yeah, uh, it was brief, but it was cool. Yeah, it was yeah. a quick road trip with the family. Um, first outing out with the new new one. She was cute, and, man. Uh, She's good. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. She's a very happy, just easygoing baby. That's why we made it all the way out. I wasn't expecting to even go that far, but um, I wanted to go out west some way somewhere just while i had some time off uh at work and she was being so good in the car we just kept going so it was cool man uh like i like i told you when i saw you man it's a beautiful state love to live there it's uh, a lot of shit to do uh the weather was pretty nice whenever i was over there yeah it's kind of it was... hotter than i expected but um but it was still nice Not it as, got uh, the super cold Louisiana. front yeah you missed it no, I didn't miss Louisiana. Oh, I didn't miss Louisiana. No, I said not as humid as Louisiana. Yeah, that's for sure. It's deceptive, though, because the heat is more tolerable, but you dry out way faster. Yeah, so you're just feeling uh, dehydrated and thirsty. Yeah, it can catch up with you quick. Yeah, but I guess elevation easy. also doesn't help like when you're doing physical activity too. Yeah, but it yeah. Um like yeah, whenever I moved here and stopped the New Mexico just being in Farmington, I was lightheaded from altitude change from Louisiana. Yeah, I felt it like on my work my workout that morning. Uh, I was like, This is uh like I was just my heart rate rate was way higher just like uh walking up the hotel stairs to get back up to my room than I, I would normally expect. Yeah, at sea level, so it's noticeable. But you can forget to drink water because you don't feel so hot. Yeah, in Louisiana, it's like I need to drink water because I feel like I can't breathe. Yeah, you're in a shower all day long. Yeah, it's turned up all the way, like a sauna. maximum temperature. Yeah, like all a sauna. Way. No, but like a, a humid sauna. Humid as fuck. I, I'm and drawing. you can't walk out, you can't escape, you can't turn it off. Nope, you just, you're sweating pretty much all summer. You're sweating from the moment you walk outside to the moment you go back in the air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah, you can walk to your car, back to your house, because, like, you forgot your yeah, you got whatever beads, lighter. beads of sweat rolling down your back. Yeah, and you get back um, inside. You're... But you kind of adapt to it. When you get back inside, because you're like full people of sweat. That, yeah, and your AC's kicking ass. But people that don't go there, they get afraid of that. But yeah, you, you just kind of get, get yeah, you get used to it, and it's kind of nice in its own way. I, I, really I just need, really, I just need some shade, and I can survive. It's the yeah. direct sun with that shit that is just so sure. brutal. Yeah. Even so. in the morning, like 7.45, you walk out, and you're like, fuck, it's already... I cannot run whenever it's uh, in summertime. I have to run like when it's dark out in the morning or else I can't do it. It's yeah. just too hot. Like, probably dangerous. You're literally <laughs> in a cloud. Out. Yeah, basically. Like, there's just a big, heavy, thick, wet cloud just sitting in, sitting on the town until it goes away. Speaking yeah. of thick, heavy, yeah. wet clouds, fallen angels came through the clouds. <laughs> I was going to see how's he going to fucking transition from this to the book. That was fallen angels. Thanks. Th uh, yeah. Fallen angels came from above the clouds. That is basically what this entire. Was about, um, fallen angels. Yeah. Fallen angels. But because we, the interpretation of what fallen angels means from the Bible. Yeah. Um, I thought it was pretty interesting. What do you think of the book? Um, I like the book. I don't think it is the best source, but for where I'm at, relative to biblical excerpts on this stuff, really good starting point. Um, I, I Overall, for where I'm at right now, I liked it. Kept my interest. Except the beginning, it talked yeah, too much. Yeah, it was a good intro, but once it got to the meat of the stuff, because we've been talking about Hollow Earth relative to yeah. Tibetan Buddhists and ancient cultures, and their theories are such that reptilian people live in the Earth. This is not QAnon modern stuff. This is thousands of year old cult, global cultures and stuff. Reptilians live in the middle of the Earth. 
and they are some are small but some are giants but some are hairy some are smooth some have big uh eyes some don't oh but they all have human eye more humanoid like features yeah reptilian whatever that means so this connects to giants because fucking they live in the underworld but in the bible they were cast to tartarius which is also the underworld so the no, bible the giants weren't cast to tartarius the no they weren't fallen angels, the fallen but, angels the giants fathers were cast to tartarius right and chained, chained by god there right there so sins. the sun the fallen angels could very well be the reptilians there's a way it connects biblically and shit we'll get into that yeah, and we'll, yeah, we will get into it because the way I interpreted the prison that God, God yeah, cast them into, that's where I felt that there. that was hollow earth. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's where exactly. my mind went. So. so, the first verse, to sum it up, is Genesis 6, something from Genesis 6. says, when six, men four. began, yeah, 6-4? Yeah, okay, so, like um, I, gotta find I have Genesis 6, verses 2 and 4. Oh, yeah, Genesis 6, 2, 4, yeah. So when men began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Thoughts? The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, the men of renown. So there's a lot of interpretation about what are the sons of God and who are the daughters of men. But either way, there was a having of children between these two, and they had the Nephilim, which translates, we'll find out, to fallen angels, translates to, it actually doesn't translate to giants, ultimately. But the Nephilim were giant. It says they were heroes of old men of renown, and they're described as being huge as fuck, basically. In, in ordinary, in other words, though, they were, they were super human in nature, because they were the offspring of both humans and um, deities, basically, or like angels. Yeah, fallen angels. Fallen angels, or but, to potentially interpret it as extraterrestrials. Yeah, and every culture, the Aztecs, Incas, Indians, Tibetan Buddhists, they all have this same mythology of the origin of beings from the sky, like uh, Quetzalcoatl, the Incans. Yep. He was uh, the feathered serpent that came in a ball of fire, to name a few. Yeah, we, discuss, but, we discussed a lot of it in our Hollow Earth episode. Yeah, so this is basically... that include the flying uh, disc, the shields that they flew in on. Yeah. So this is specifically the biblical... Um, Interpretation. The biblical accounts of the same things spoken in other cultures. Yep. So centuries later... The Nephilim emerged again in the land of Canaan. And in Numbers 13, 2, 25 to 33, <laughs> God bless you. No. As it says, as before, God ordered their destruction because they were fornicating with women and diluting his bloodline, basically. Uh, so he sent out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I'm giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. When they returned from spying out the land at the end of the 40 days, they proceeded to come to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. I mean, this is specific stuff, you know, specific yeah. stuff. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So they went to Canaan and they and they scouted it out. And they came back with fruit. They spying they, on the lands of Canaan. Spying, yes. yeah. They Because these were giant motherfuckers so they said we went into the land where you sent us and it certainly does flow with milk and honey and this is its fruit nevertheless the people who live in the land are strong the cities are fortified and very large and moreover we saw the descendants of Anak there Amalek is living in the land of the Negev and the Hittites and the Jesuits and the Amorites are living in the hill country Canaanites are living by the sea by the side of Jordan so they figured out everything and it goes on to say, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, 
we should by no we should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we'll surely overcome it. But the men who had gone up with them said, We're not able to go up against the people. They're too strong for us. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out. They said, The land through which we have gone is a land that devours its inhabitants. The people we saw in it are men of great size. There also we saw the Nephilim. The sons of Anak are part of the Nephilim. And we became like grasshoppers in their own sight. And so we were in comparison. Yeah. So that's a pretty not woo-woo spiritual verse. It's just a historical account. 1333, if you guys want to look that up for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was surprised by how many references to uh, the Nephilim and giants there were in the Bible. Yeah. And they're archaeologically, they're uncovering a lot that they're not really talking about, but they are uncovering a lot of giant stuff in Russia, the Denisovans. Yep. So it's so, like, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, just, I just read a bunch. I'll let you talk. No, I, I was like I was saying, I was just surprised by how much uh, references to the giants there were in the Bible. I had no idea even, you know, growing up in a uh, not a super duper Christian household like you, like where you went to school, like a Christian school, but like one where I was brought to church every Sunday and shit like that. You don't interpret the the text in the same way. I, or I don't know, maybe I was just too young at the time and not paying yeah. attention. Um, but like, man, now that I'm older and I'm looking at this, it's like super interesting shit. And then when you cross reference all of it with the other cultures that have references to, uh, all of this stuff, it's, it's very interesting. And then when you come across things like the book of Enoch and we read yes. that and we, we, we get to that very soon, like that was like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. So right there in the Bible, just staring us in the face everywhere we go. Grandma's carrying this around little mini Bibles in their purse. And yep. in that little mini Bible that grandma carries around for whenever she needs the anoint, anointing of the spirit, right in that little book, it's all this crazy history. Yeah, I'm trying to look through. I, I should have done a better job with this notes, but all good. I'm hung up on the Nephilim giant connection because once I started to explain it, then it made less sense. So the fallen angels bred with the daughters of men or the sons of God with the daughters of men and they had the Nephilim and the Nephilim were giants yes I don't the know that there were giants I don't know that much was said about the size of the fallen sons of God fallen angels because you're talking about well, back so, yeah, Lucifer gotta... when he was cast out of heaven Lucifer was cast out and with him a lot of angels so that's what we're talking about this group of fallen angels or sons of God Maybe we should go back and kind of explain how we interpret sons of God as fallen angels, because that can be confusing if you didn't really read through the book and read through the reasoning of how he made it to that interpretation. Um, yeah, I don't know where that's at in my notes. I know that's further ahead, so it's kind of letting the mystery linger. Oh, well, OK, I thought it was earlier in the book, so that's why I was. Maybe he did. Um, maybe it was. But the biblical connection Nephilim and the giants and hollow earth. And I think I got lost because the fallen angels, are they the ones that came from hollow earth? So this was, uh, I'll kind of give you my summaration of it, of how I interpreted that. You know, the sons of God are the fallen angels. They, they fell into lust after the women of earth and uh, defiled the bloodline. Uh, something that God considered such a heinous crime uh, that he had to destroy both the humans of earth at the time to cleanse the bloodline and all of the offspring of that time, the Nephilim. Yes, and the and Nephilim he cast out resurfaced the before angels. the flood. They were before the flood. That's what it was. Yeah, and well, then God cast the fallen angels who had mated with the women of earth into Tartarus, which or hell. is or hell the ba or basically prison right is described as a bunch of different ways in the i think the hebrew term that was used in the text was Tartarus, so known as a prison the depths hell basically a very bad fucking place yeah uh, 
and they were to live there for the rest of eternity. Now, um, you could interpret that as Tartarus being the hollow earth, because in one translation, it is of the depths. So, hey, that could be the depths of the earth, right? I don't know. That's where my mind went at, in connection to this hollow earth thing. Yeah, well, I think it's pretty clear that Tartarus was the underworld, because that's another word for it was underworld and but the other thing about hollow earth was that it's also described as a place with perfect weather and beautiful and all that stuff so i don't think hollow earth is only tartarus hell i think that's a region of hollow earth like you gotta go yeah. you know so into tartarus the sometimes known as the nether realms um let's see but that stuff you were talking about is a little further ahead. I have the Genesis Apocryphon comes before the stuff where it breaks down sons of God and fallen angels. Okay, we can just go through do it in whatever order. Um, but yeah. Uh, what do you got? What do you got right there? Well, so the, when he's talking about the sons of God, so sons of God can be interpreted a couple different ways. It can be con- interpreted as literally... Um, one of the interpretations was what the sons of either Seth and Cain, yeah. sons of Cain, daughters of Seth, or I might have that reversed there. Um, one, in other words, some people have interpreted that verse as believers and non-believers mating with each other, and then God having to cleanse the earth of since the the sin was so prolific um, yeah. from that. Um, meeting of those two groups that he had to actually destroy the world, which is a pretty extreme punishment um, for that. Another interpretation could be um, oh, what was the other ones? I'm sorry, I'm trying to find it in my notes. Like I said, I'm sorry, I, I don't have it well organized. It's cool. Let's get to that because it is in order of the book. Let's jump on the Genesis Apocryphon because it leads into that. Okay. Uh, it was discovered in 1947 by an Arab shepherd boy. It was thought to be the ancient book of Lamech. It was not, but did consist of a speech by Lamech and a story of some of the patriarchs from Enoch to Abraham. Because uh, that's like a lineage. According to the Bible, Lamech was the son of Methuselah and the father of Noah. Lamech was the ninth of the ten patriarchs of the antediluvian world before the flood. So Lamech was the father of Noah and the son of Methuselah. And Methuselah is the character in the Bible who lived the longest, like 996 years. He never died, and he was said to have gone off in a chariot of fire with the Lord into the sky. So another UFO-esque taking of a person by what appears to be, they call them angels, is the sons of God what it translates to? Angels, sons of God, watchers, because they appeared and they shone brightly, almost like translucent, kind of like the UFOs now, because they behave in a way that a physical object couldn't unless it was like anti gravitational. And the theories and about appear UFOs. Appear and just disappear. Yeah, and the theory is about UFOs that this book kind of connects into it was that, you know, if they travel from other star systems, it takes them hundreds of thousands of years to get here at the speed of light. Yeah. So, like, they have to be coming immediately. They must be war polling and they must be translucent and just like a manifestation of like time and light or not really a physical object, but a war pole. Like, you could. I don't know. I don't know, traveling, but that's, yeah, that's the thing about UFOs. Existence. Yeah. So, and, by, and angels are described that way a lot in the Bible. They just appear they, out of nowhere. That's, what I, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. Yeah, they appear out of nowhere and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, ninth of the ten patriarchs of the antediluvian world. So that whole lineage was like God's chosen lineage up until the Great Flood. The Genesis Apocryphon mentions Nep- Nephilim sons of God and daughters of men that Genesis 6 introduces in the Bible. It goes more into detail, and the Apocryphon also gives better insight as to how these ancient stories were interpreted by the Jews. 
when scholars finally deciphered the content, it stated that celestial beings from the skies landed on Earth. In Genesis 6, 1 through 4, these sons of God were captivated by the beauty of the daughters of men, married them, and begat giants known as Nephilim. It goes on to describe the Nephilim as mighty men and men of renown. So this new text they found in 47 is like another thing that backs up. It's just add it to the... Yeah. Add it to the pile of it's like not it's not a part of the Bible, but it's describing events described in the Bible in more detail. And a speech and by found, Lamech. And it's and it's written around the same time. Yeah, and it's a speech by Lamech, who was one of the patriarchs, the the father of Noah, who got the information from God that he needs to build a ship and, and preserve that's a- that's the other thing, and not to get off subject, but like how did I not hear about like documents like this that were adjacent to the bible in the yeah. same age you know what i mean like that yeah. should be common knowledge if you follow uh you know the christian faith yeah exactly anyway so it goes on identifying the sons of god and how you know, there's no problem that in identifying who the daughters of men are yeah here's um, your theories here's the one two three right after that uh yep. um so first, it could be uh, first a group of Orthodox Judaism theorized that sons of God meant nobles or magnates. So it says hardly anyone today accepts that view. Second, some interpreted sons of God as fallen angels. Uh, they were enticed by women of earth and began lusting after them. Um, and then third, some scholars contend that sons of God are male descendants of Seth and that the daughters of men are female descendants of Cain. And according to that view, what actually happened in Genesis 6 was an early example of believers marrying unbelievers. The good sons of Seth married the bad daughters of Cain, and the result of these mixed marriages was a mongrel offspring um, and later became known for their decadence and corruption. And it reached such a degree that God was forced to intervene and destroy the human race. Yeah. So uh, those were the – go ahead. uh, Just back to number two, the second theory – for what it means, uh, the fallen angels who were enticed by women of, women of Earth, that theory was rejected uh, on psychophysiological grounds. I did not copy and paste that word. Men of heaven can mate with women of Earth? Question mark. That's how they reject that theory. So mm-hmm. if there was mating, then they must have been physical beings in some sort. Yeah, and they they don't feel that angels are a physical being in any manner that can do things such as reproduce with. Unless the matrix is true and you can use your mind to like, you know, that cause and effect philosophical debate they have. And then the guy gives that woman a orgasm at the dinner table and like the camera goes in on her vagina and it does like matrix. <laughs> it has like this digital explosion with the code. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, if they're getting at something there, then maybe angels are physical beings, but they got a time warp, so they show up all translucent. But they can, like, it's a far theory, but it could work. Yeah, it could work. So, Uh, I mean, you think about, like, uh, like we said, the angels kind of just appearing out of nowhere, out of thin air. You know, maybe they are... uh, kind of this uh, energy that's just out there that can manifest itself in physical form just upon yeah. command. Or maybe they're and, not even uh, that far. Maybe space is fake. There is a firmament, and they're right on the outside. And it's as it is described in the Tibetan Buddhist and all that stuff about the firmament and how God sits at the top of the world looking over it all. Maybe he's like above Polaris, like right there. They just pop in and out. Maybe. Maybe because why did Warner von Braun get that scripture verse engraved on his tombstone that said the firmament will show us his handiwork from the Bible, the rocket scientists from the Nazis who led NASA. What the fuck? I'm sure we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I showed it on an episode a while back, but that's on I his probably tombstone. said the same thing. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's on, yeah. why would he put that on his tombstone about the firm? Because they were trying to go out into space. If anybody knew, it would be that guy who led NASA to the moon. Like, hey, there's a fucking, I'm going to plug this on my tombstone. Because that's William Shatner. Yeah, there ain't. Did you see? I saw a Photoshop. I saw a picture today of Jeff Bezos and William Shatner. 
and like the creases and stuff in their spacesuits are the exact same. They okay. just like what does that messed, mean? They just photoshopped their face onto the uniform and messed with the color, like they're faking it. It it goes with the they're faking all the space shit stuff. So, so you don't like, think they actually went uh, up there? I don't know. I'm just entertaining that theory because yeah, I saw sure. the but picture what's side your by gut side. Feeling? What's your gut feeling? If that what I saw was real, my gut feeling is why the fuck would they do that? But what if what you saw wasn't the real photo and that was photoshopped? I don't know. I saw photos of William Shatner actually in the little cube. But I think they have video of it. That's what I'm saying. Now. Yeah. And video is harder to fake. Yeah, I, but they had that picture and I was like, holy shit. It's probably a fake picture like somebody just did it. But <laughs> I'm just whatever playing devil's advocate. Uh, but anyway, didn't mean to get us off, off track. But, the but that argument, is crazy about Warner Von Braun. Yeah, the firmament. Same, yeah. So maybe the angels aren't that far. They're just right above right. the dome. But the Seth and Cain thing, the Bible makes it clear that sons of God and daughters of men is who made it, not sons of Seth and daughters of Cain. It would have just said that, you know. So there's no epistemological evidence that sons of God and daughters of men should mean yeah, well, and then they have Seth. other examples where sons of God is used in reference of, of angels in the Bible, like in Job exactly. 7, it says, the sons of God shouted for joy when God laid the foundations of the earth. Angels were the only entities that fit into the designation at that time since man had not yet been created. In Job 1.6 and Job 2.1, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord of heaven. Among the sons of God is Satan, a further implication that the sons of God must have been angels and fallen angels at that. Um, and since sons of God is consistently used in the Old Testament for angels, it is logical to conclude that that term in Genesis 6, Genesis 6 2 also refers to angels. So yeah, so there's out so of those much... three theories, it is the strongest of the three that that term refers to angels. Yeah. Because so, when and... you actually track it back, it doesn't go anywhere near Seth and Cain, it goes towards the countless other parts of the bible where sons of god is fallen angels so if you go back to that genesis verse and talk about daughters of men sons of god um, mating with daughters of men then we know that what those two phrases mean daughters of men are the humans on earth at the, t the female humans on earth at the time and sons of god are fallen angels like sam tripoli says everybody wants to bang earth chicks that's right man sam's right everyone wants to bang earth chicks <laughs> 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 but backing up a little bit uh right before the job stuff uh the the designation sons of god is used four other times in the old testament each time referring to angels. This is where we get to the translucent thing. Uh, in Daniel 3.25, where King Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fiery furnace and sees four men. You know about that story? Mm -hmm. uh, Veggie Tales had a good episode about that story. I loved that show. <laughs> I love Veggie, Veggie Tales, too. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, so... It says, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The translation is different and clearer in their modern versions. Because they look in the furnace and there's a fourth person because they're burning Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. I remember those names. So the, there's a fourth character, and it was like the Son of God. Uh like this guy since Jesus had not yet become the only begotten son of God this son would have to be angelic another example is job 38 7 which says the sons of God shall yeah okay yeah, you said that yes. yeah. But yeah he would have been like translucent in the fire and he would have touched Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and just gave him his anti-gravitational field that's all that's it this that's it. So, and, and then, so you got three categories of sons of God. It goes on um, that those, it's termed that in the Bible, it's limited to either angels, Adam, the original, you know, and then believers. All three are special and specific creations of God. As for the use of the term in Genesis 6, it cannot possibly refer to Adam nor believers in Christ. Uh, so we have to conclude that it refers to angels whom God had created. 
So there you go. Sons of God, based on all the evidence, more than likely means angels. Or whatever definition uh, angels uh, would mean in the modern terms, uh, whether it's like aliens, extraterrestrials, or whatever you want to say. Yeah. So this is interesting. Adam was made in God's image. He was a son of God, and his descendants were sons of men. In the Old Testament terminology, angels are called sons of God, while men are called servants of servants of God. In the New Testament, this is reversed. Angels are the servants, and Christians are the sons of God. So we're pulling from the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, sons of God means angels. Adam was made in the image of God. He was a son of God. His descendants were sons of men. So he was an angel, technically, according to this theory. Yeah, I guess so. It doesn't go any deeper into that, though, at all. Right. And then it talks about other fallen angels. Um Jude 6, 7 states, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication after going after strange flesh. So uh, th- that's also a reference, I believe, to Tartarus right there, if I'm not mistaken. Everlasting chains under about, darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Under the and, judgment of the great to the until the judgment of the great day. Yeah, and it'll get to a verse later where the the Bible actually mentions Tartarus. Actually, right. it actually damn mention it. But it's just um, cool that it, there's like multiple references to the same event happening from different authors of the Bible. Yeah, and the strange flesh is said to be because relative to the fallen angels and what they're made of or whatever women are humans they are not of the same and that's what upset god is because they diluted his bloodline Bloodline. and messed up his messed up his human bloodline too and they brought out and also they started sharing we'll get into this but they started sharing the secrets of god like the sciences and things like that and how to make weapons and that's when people became really fucked up and God was like, you fucked up my shit, but we'll get to that. So it says here, 1 Corinthians eleven ten, Paul instructs that a woman should cover her head as a sign of subjection to her husband and also because of the because angels. Of the angels. Yeah, so there's a lot of talk in here about covering, covering your head. Because of those horny angels just want to come down and fuck the earth girls. Yeah. Fucking... That's what's happening, man. You it's see, even like Catholic Church. Bible. It's like Catholic Church in heaven. They can't they can't fuck anybody because God is he's like the priest where he keeps that you know, like back in the day the priest would have women and they wouldn't be able to have sex. And they would go like psychologically they were discovering these psychotic fits in women. Like when they <laughs> are kept from that like they go crazy yeah and then i think the priest would take advantage of that but i forgot what my point was there but it's like that in heaven too he's god's doing I, that like they, they're all they're going not crazy. even supposed to have those desires there's no they have no need for that because they're they don't reproduce because they're immortal and eternal so they don't have the desire to pat to be immortal through their offspring so well when you see a hot earth chick, you'll figure out a way. Just yeah, you just can't help it. Figure out a way. He's like, what's this feeling? <laughs> they just, it looks so fun with the, the humans doing it that they have to participate. They just can't hold back. Yeah, we taught them. Yep. So William Barclay mentions an old r- r- rabbinic tradition, which alleges that it was the beauty of the woman's long hair that attracted and tempted the angels in Genesis 6. Um, so there, there's uh, a lot of references to angels being attracted to daughters of men. Yeah, daughters of men. Here and it said that the offspring were so extraordinary that it indicates an unusual parent parentage. Um, their mothers could not possibly be humans, or their fathers uh, couldn't be human, or certainly not both, because uh, they had superhuman characteristics. 
extraordinary character and the I'm sorry, I read that incorrectly. Yeah, only in such a way can one account for the extraordinary crowd character and the prowess prowess of the offspring. And then it gets into giants and Nephilim. what Nephilim means. It's a Hebrew word translated as giants. So I read this earlier. Uh, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Yada yada. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Comes from the root nephil, meaning fallen ones. Yeah. So uh, why does modern versions of the Bible have left the word Nephilim untranslated? Because there is much debate around what the word actually translates to. So they've just kind of given up at this point in some of the more modern versions. Yeah. And just left it in its original form. The Greek. The Greek Septuagint is a good indicator. It was the Greek version of the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament for Greek-speaking Jews in Egypt in 3rd and 2nd century BC. It was adopted by the early Christian churches. This is the Greek Septuagint. And Nephilim here was translated as Jejins. G-E-G-E-N-E-S. Jejins. How do you say that? I don't I'm know. Saying good genes. Oh, uh, good good genus or something. And yeah. this means earthborn. Similarly referred to the Titans in Greek mythology being partly of celestial and terrestrial origin. Interesting. That, when we get to that later on, that was fascinating. Okay. Their strength and size, however, is implied in Numbers 1333. We saw the Nephilim there. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Yeah, so they were big. They are also called Earthborn. The Titans were the same way, and they're not necessary. It doesn't necessarily translate the giant everywhere. That's the thing. Yeah, and it it could. I think it just means exceptional human, really, more than anything like when you get to the end of all this and all the different interpretations that's probably the best way to interpret it someone with exceptional strength and intellect in in some cases size the septuagint translated nephilim as giginus and has left sons of god in other texts the alexandrian text translated to translates it to angelos this text was around when Jesus was alive, and there's no record of him correcting it. Nowhere before the 5th century AD do we find any interpretation other than that of angels. And, it, and I like this line he had in the book. It said, we cannot deny the Jewish father's knowledge of their own terminology. So you kind of got to defer to him. Yeah, because... Uh... In this guy who wrote this book, I'm sure is like a hardcore uh, Christian. So, yeah, giving it, it up to the Jews. It's called the Omega Conspiracy, and it's like a free PDF. It's from like uh, the 50s or the 80s, but it's pretty decent. It's a good starting point for this stuff. And Noah, see, Noah was protected because he kept his bloodline pure. Yes, he sure did. He was a good guy. You know, he wanted to, though. You know, he was like, oh, look at that earth chick over there. But he didn't. Well, so I don't believe that Noah was uh, one of the fallen angels, though. No, 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 no. But that's why God used him and gave him the information of the arcs to protect him because he, his family bloodline was not tainted by fallen angels. Yeah, he kept he was his daughter. Yeah, he was uncontaminated he, by alien invaders. Yeah, he's not the he son alone of preserved the pedigree and kept it pure in spite of the prevailing corruption brought by the fallen angels. Um, his bloodline remained free of the genetic contamination, which implied that all other families on Earth had been contained by the Nephilim, and that would prove that the assault of Satan on the human race had been far more extensive than realized. And that's why God pronounced such a universal fiat of judgment. So that's why Noah was kept spared in the great deluge. For the tradition is that these men did what resembled the acts of those men, the Grecians called giants. 
So this is where we get into Tartarus, Second Peter 2, 4. For if God did not spare the angels having sinned, but having cast them down to Tartarus in chains of gloomy darkness, delivered them, being kept for judgment. Tartarus is interpreted as the nether realms. So that was their punishment for fornicating with strange flesh, messing up his bloodline. Uh, he cor- Satan, so basically, Satan was trying to corrupt the human race. Which would have doomed the human race because it would have um, doomed the possibility for the Jesus Christ to be born, to die for the sins of the humans. Interesting. Right? So that's why so, God was so pissed and why he had to destroy the earth at the time. Which, you know, we talked about Randall Carlson and all that stuff. That's where I get a little lost because I don't think God destroyed the earth because of that. So that puts a real big hole in this theory, I think, um, with Randall Carlson. Solar cycle, we got pummeled into the Ice Age. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, kind of more with that too. Actually, oh, I'm reading it. So he actually, I'm reading it right in the book right now. So if it says, if Satan had succeeded in corrupting the human race, he would have hindered the coming of the perfect son of God that promised the seed of the woman who would defeat Satan and restore man's dominion. Genesis 3, 15. If Satan had by any means prevented that birth, he would have averted his own doom. So, uh, yeah, that that's the biblical reasoning for the great deluge but i'm with you i believe it was a cosmic event yeah there's a ton of ton of evidence for that now 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 it could be both it could be that god caused the cosmic event and shared that knowledge with noah prior to it happening and that's how the great deluge happened yeah so if he's up there and he made all this why couldn't he just pull some asteroids in and throw it at the ice caps it seems like he did that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not... Saying, yeah. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, okay, yeah. Because he's just... Yeah. Because the thing that's is... How he, you, that's how he did it. Is when he you get... Some, when you get into Noah and the Ark, didn't they apparently find the Ark, or there's people searching for it, because there's enough realistic possibility that they're funding the searching of Noah and all this lineage is real. Like if Noah's real and the ark was a real thing and the flood was a real thing, we've got to find some way to make these pieces fit that it was well, a we solar know the cycle. Flood was a real thing, right? Like we, we yeah. we've had episodes on that. Like there's geo geological evidence that yeah, there was enormous um, flooding around. I forget the name of the era. Um, do you remember what era? Whenever that, uh, whenever we had the 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 ice caps basically disintegrate and flood the whole world, twelve thousand six hundred years ago, yeah. diluvian age, the diluvian. No, diluvian is the word for flooding, but there was another term for that age. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Long story short, we know there's a lot of evidence all across the world for great flooding that happened uh, almost in instantaneously at one point in time in ancient history so um it's not like we don't believe that there was a great flood in ancient times um now whether or not there's an an ark that we're gonna find uh you know i don't think that that's a high probability if i'm just i mean if it were built out of wood and the materials available at the time Chances are that it's that there's any material still left behind is slim to none. I would think. I think where it says in the Bible that his ark came resting down was a is a real mountain, and they've searched. It's like Mount Ararat, but like the account of him, his ship, and the account of his lineage. Apparently, that's all real. Like where he said, you know, it's, he didn't make up some fairyland that his ship. He didn't say my ship landed in the depths of the of the love of God, right? Or something. It was like we landed on Mount Ararat, and then started again here. So got you, yeah. 
interesting. But it kind of gets into Lamech a little more from the Genesis Apocryphon. It's a little story. He left a long time for battle. His wife had a kid while he was gone. It shared no resemblance to him or the family. It was remarkably beautiful, and its eyes shone like the rays of the sun. I have begotten a strange son, said Lamech. His nature is different. He's not like us. His eyes are as the rays of the sun. His countenance is glorious. It seems to be that he has not sprung from me, but from the angels. <laughs> and his wife, Bat Enosh, swore it must be his. She had not known anyone but him, not strangers or even watchers or heavenly beings, is what she said. And that's his wife, Bat Enosh. And after that, he legally changed her name to Bat Shit Crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, so weird, right? She was a cheating whore who banged an alien, lied to her husband about it, and then later started to <laughs> lie to an him. alien. But the story goes on that <laughs> she like swore she didn't meet anybody, and then he starts to come around. Okay, maybe it is my kid. But yes, yeah, my lord and there. kinsmen, I will ignore my delicate feelings and swear to you by the holy and great one, the sovereign of heaven and earth, that this seed came from you and this fruit was planted by you and not by some stranger or by any of the watchers or heavenly beings. Have done with this trouble and my expression with this gloomy mood. I'm telling you the truth. So that's what that's what Bat Enosh tells Lamech. And it's then Lamech, stuff. by this time, begins to realize that the child could have been conceived by one of the watchers or heavenly beings. And if so, his child belonged to the Nephilim. And then he gets into the mystery of Noah's birth, too. Did you have notes on that? Um, no. Tell me about that. That's the chapter right after. Um, oh, I had Enoch right after. It talked a little bit about him. But just how he was known to withdraw from the earth to visit the ten heavens and would return with a glow in his face similar to Moses when he visited Mount Sinai. Enoch talks of a visit to the fifth heaven with giants with faces withered and the silence of their mouth perpetual. Enoch called them Gregory. Are you familiar with Gregorian chants from the Middle Ages? Oh, 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 all that stuff. Dear Lord, listen, Father God. Yeah. That, but that's a weird word that comes up in the Middle Ages. Gregorian chants. They were perpetuating this name of Gregory. I never knew Enoch used that word for fallen angels who broke their vows, married the daughters of men, and rebuked the earth with their deeds. He referred to the sons of God as watchers, just as in the book of Daniel. So a Gregorian chant, I knew that a long time ago, but who would have known Gregory, the root word, means all this. Gregory, fallen angels. Enoch. That's wild. That hit me in my face when I saw Gregory. I was like, whoa. I didn't put that two and two together, so I'm just kind of realizing that now. That's pretty cool. weird, right? That's pretty weird. Hey, that's what this show is. We're learning what we don't know about what we do know. Yeah, but first, the Noah's birth, um, Lamech sought the advice of his father, uh, Methuselah, uh, listened attentively as you're the story. Nope, not Methuselah. Methuselah. Okay, okay. It, no, it's not Methuselah. Though. That's a different, different character. Yeah. Um, Attentively listen to his story, promised his son he would seek the advice of his father, the wise and godly Enoch. And since the family's reputation was at stake, they had to do something. So he went to Enoch, whose name meant the intelligent or the learned. Um, and he sensed the meaning of what had happened. He sent Methuselah home with the... Well, then it says Methuselah. So what the fuck? He yeah, sent Methuselah a... home with the disturbing news that Earth would soon be visited by a terrible catastrophe and judgment. Well, first of all, how did Enoch know that, right? It was clear that the corruption had taken place and that the human race had become tainted. God would soon be moving in judgment and human flesh would perish. And as for this little boy whose birth remained a mystery, he should be raised by Lamech and should be called Noah. What is more, little Noah had been specially chosen by God to survive this coming judgment and would be the progenitor of the new inhabitants of planet Earth. 
Despite the mystery surrounding his birth, Noah could not be one of the Nephilim, as we shall see. You know, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, kind of Enoch predicted what would happen uh, whenever Lamech's, uh, whenever Bat Anash, or Lamech's wife, was uh, impregnated by one of these fallen angels, that God would be angry and would cast judgment upon them and destroy the world. So. Enoch had to be some kind of special character, too, if he was able to predict things like that with such accuracy, right? So yeah. then you get to, know, get to know who Enoch is. Um, the, book the book of, of Enoch. Go alleges, ahead. It alleges that 200 of these watchers descended to earth in the days of Jared. And some of them are given names. The worst... Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is a... This is relative to Enoch. But this is also... Rel so I'll just continue. The worst one of these 200 watchers was called Azazel. The name occurs in other Jewish documents like the Apocalypse of Abraham. Azazel is accused of having scattered over the earth the secrets of heaven and hath rebelled against the Mighty One. His name is also found in ancient Jewish ritual concerning the Day of Atonement. On that day... The iniquities of the people of Israel were laid on the scapegoat, and then the scapegoat was driven away to Azazel to the wilderness, Leviticus 16. Azazel was a demon who inhabited a region in the Judean wilderness. There is an interesting aside on Azazel, an essay by Jacob Z. Lauterbach, explaining stray references to the activity of Satan on Yom Kippur which just passed September 16th when our live record dropped, Alfred and the Ted Naders. It just oh. so happened that we dropped it, and I was like, oh, we'll do a release up to Yom Kippur because the calendar said it was a holiday. And we named it Tale of the Feathered Serpent. And it turns out that's Quetzalcoatl, which seems to be the most prominent of fallen sky gods, or in the Bible version, Azazel, that's my connection. Um, so there's like rituals to negate Satan's efforts in three ways during this time. Um, yeah, side note and a plug for our live record. <laughs> I love it. Um, where's the notes on Enoch? Do you have them? I thought yeah, I was going uh, into it and it was not it. So, as far as who Enoch was, um, he was mentioned in the scriptures, I think, uh, four verses in all, two in the Old Testament, two in the New. Um, he was the father of Methuselah, the man holding the world's record for longevity. Uh, he became a believer and started walking with God after his son was born. And he became known for his exceptional piety and godliness. And one thing that I thought was interesting that they describe is that he Enoch, and this was a quote that Enoch walked with God, and and he was not, for God took him, and he was one. He was so he was one of only two men in the Bible who never died. Basically, God just took him with him to heaven. In the book of Enoch, other significant facts are given about his patriarch. Uh, claims that Enoch will return to Earth at the end of time, and he will be one of the two martyrs or witnesses slain on the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, the book of Yasher still adds even more detail and tells how Enoch would periodically withdraw himself from earthly company. That sounds like alien shit to me. And yeah. visit the ten heavens. He would then return to earth with a divine luster on his face as Moses emerged from the presence of God on Mount Sinai and knew not that his face shone. To me, he sounds like a, an alien or a fallen angel, right? Yeah, like he's got some really crazy electromagnetic and, energy and in his brain. With, and he's friends with God somehow and is able to kind of, like, he's on that type of level, right? Yeah, and, and I mean, we think about, like, uh, bacteria and, and, and stuff that grows in the water in the caves. We showed pictures of it glowing, lichen. Glow. Yeah. Those fish that glow. So there's a physiological way to produce a glowing effect. So it's not out of the realm of possibility if he was some special breed of human back then. Where he could turn on something, you know, when he gets like that energy from wherever, he, whatever he's doing, like next level, human, like the, your whole brain's being used. 
got a big special brain and yeah. he just comes out and he's just glowing. It's not impossible. Provided these facts are true, that they were some special breed of human. It's not impossible. Maybe he's, I don't know. Why can right. do it? Why can, can do it? It says also the book of Jude, verses 14, 15, we're told of prophe prophecy that Enoch made concerning the coming of the Lord, which might be the oldest literary statement in existence. In it, Enoch predicts, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed and of their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And it says it's obvious Jude had access to the book of Enoch and he did not hesitate to quote from it. So uh, in the book of Jude, it seems that there are quotes from the book of Enoch, which is not a book of the Bible, but a book adjacent to the Bible. So interesting stuff. Um, yeah. It goes on to say that Enoch obviously had access to knowledge and information completely beyond the reach of moral man at that stage of man's development. That's something I always find uh, fascinating, you know, throughout this text is this idea that these fallen angels had this forbidden knowledge or this no this knowledge of how all things worked in the universe that were beyond what man had access to, and that they yeah. that they share this knowledge with men in this great sin. Um, and that's what's weird about that is that's something that's depicted in ancient cultures throughout the world, non-Christian as well. Um, and we've talked about that in several episodes. Um, uh, Graham Hancock uh, has talked about this a good bit as well in some of the art depicted in these really ancient sites that are around the world that depict beings coming from the sky, giving what looks like gifts and bags, which could be interpreted as, as knowledge that they're handing down from um from these higher higher beings to to man yeah to, to advance knowledge so there's this theme that is constant right and throughout all these ancient cultures that talks about this and when you look at the advancement of civilization in ancient times there is this strange peak that comes out of nowhere that all seems to coincide around the same time so it's even the fact that it's even mentioned in the bible and books adjacent to the Bible and books like the book of Enoch is really fascinating to me. Yeah. So well um, said. And then as it goes and it goes as it goes further down, it starts to talk about the watchers. And a watchers is a term that's found in the book of Daniel um, that is basically referring to fallen angels. And this book goes into more and more about why watchers mean fallen angels. But to summarize and get get past all that, you know, you talk about the watchers. Uh, and how the book of Enoch alleges that 200 of these watchers descended to earth and they were given names. And you talked about Azazel um, and some of the things regarding that. But it also goes on to say that according to the book of Enoch, these watchers instructed the people of earth in many studies, including the use of charms, enchantments, the arts of magic and the secrets of the cosmetic trade. So once again, we have this reference to the passing down of knowledge from these fallen angels to the people of earth right from both enoch himself and then from these watchers that are instructing the people of earth so a fascinating thing that just keeps occurring over and over and over again yeah and there's actually some an interesting account where enoch is kind of the message boy mess the 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 messenger between god and the watchers because the watchers basically they had the Nephilim and now their secrets are out there. So the Nephilim were just wreaking havoc and partaking and, you know, drinking blood, devouring flesh. And you get into Kronos and Greek mythology. He ate flesh and baby and it connects into Saturn and all this stuff kind of connects. But basically it got bad enough that the people brought accusations against the watchers. So they seem to be a part of society normal thing so enoch is instructed by the most high to deliver this warning to the watchers so god's like go tell them this enoch thou scribe of righteousness go declare to the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven the holy eternal place who have defiled themselves with women done as children of earth do and taken unto themselves wives 
Tell them, ye have wrought great destruction on earth, and ye shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. So the same watchers in turn approached Enoch to mediate on their behalf and to write out a petition in their favor. So like, all right, tell God this. God rejects the petition, and Enoch is summoned to speak to the watchers again. So this is fascinating. He says, go, say to the watchers of heaven who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men and not men for you. Wherefore, have ye left high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, defiled yourselves, taken wives, all that. And you are holy, spiritual, living, and eternal life, defiled yourselves. It keeps going on. And as for the giants or Nephilim produced by them, the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from holy watchers in their beginning and primal origin. So that's how they can be like a physical being but have spirit. And maybe that's where this belief in spirit comes from. That just hit me. Weird. So, and the spirits of the giants afflict, oppress, attack, do bad and work battle. Dis- battle and work destruction upon the earth. Sorry, I had a typo. And these spirits shall rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them. This shall they destroy until the day of consummation, the great judgment in which the age shall be consummated over the watchers and the godless. And now as to the watchers, say to them, therefore ye have no peace. So that's weird. Bro. Enoch was a messenger between the two. So it seems like I mean, if Enoch and and all this is real about Noah's lineage, which I think they know that, right? I think they know that. I think that's kind of like outlined in the Bible that way, right? Enoch was uh, Methuselah's father. Methuselah was Lamech's father. Lamech was Noah's father, right? So, but I th- but I want to I want to say I don't know for sure. I want to say like they they know they were real people, and that lineage checks out. I I can't say it with any. Maybe. I'd have to look that up. Right. But me neither. It just seems like if it was absolutely fake and not real, we would know that by now. Right. But anyway, that's just that's that's where Enoch was. He God was telling him, Go tell the watchers. And then the watchers were telling him, Well, go tell God. And all the people were sick of what the watchers were doing. So it apparently was like a real part of society. And this was all before Jesus was sent to allow forgiveness of sins for the people. Right. For all the people who's not like all the children of the watchers and daughters of men and the Nephilim and all that, there needs to be forgiveness for all post generations who had no part in this. That could make sense. So I need to send a perfect one for sacrifice. And uh, maybe back then they were tapped into higher energies and blood sacrifices meant more. Maybe so, man. Fuck. I mean, supposedly people lived to like 900 years old back before uh, Christ, too. So yeah. like, there was different energy back then altogether, right? And and it doesn't have to be like from your mind because Zeus had his trident of electricity. Um, Toth, the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, that Egyptian guy, he had a device that could shoot vibrations is what it's described in this super ancient emerald tablet you know a device that shot vibrations and he blew back his enemy a number of feet or something like you could they could have just had like science like what the watchers shared with people devices processes drugs to unlock that that we don't have now like we might just be missing the right combination of copper and gold to like I don't know I don't know what I'm talking about I I get what you mean but like have elements and things that we don't have available in our current realm of existence that have yeah allowed you know phenomenal types of space travel and things things like that that are not capable anymore like you think about like element 115 that Bob Lazar discovered that they he theorized in in his well not a theory but supposedly uh, what he claims he was working on at area uh, fifty one at whatever at section four or whatever 
Yeah, that one uh, chemical changed everything. That one chemical that supposedly allows him them to bend gravity around and, and move very quickly through space. But yeah. it's not an element that's naturally occurring on Earth. Yeah, like we have an Alexa, like, but what the, if we had a little black box that would emit and it would just it would yeah, amplify only, our brain waves and we would come that, out glowing. That element we know is a real thing, but we've only been able to synthesize it in very short amounts of time. And we haven't been able to produce a stable form of it, but theoretically, if we were able to produce a stable form of it, then we would be able to use it for a, a form of unlimited energy. Yeah, we can make it. It's just not stable. It decays. Right. So, so and I'm at they the can end have of my knowledge notes. around things like that. Um, I'm at the end of my notes, and I thought this was a great way to sum it up. Do you have anything else to add before I? No, I just I'd like to talk about some of the other ancient documents that. Okay, uh, I know you're on a time crunch, so I don't want to. Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, it's eleven fifty. Yeah, true. yeah, we could we could wrap it up there because I mean I think this the other data that's in here is just more reinforcing yeah. data around what the the points that we have already made. Uh, you know, another just real quick, they talk about the Z Zadokite document, which was discovered about a half century ago in the attic of an old synagogue in Cairo that's thought to be related to the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that document refers to the scent of watchers and to their giant offspring. Because they walked in the stubbornness of the heart that watchers of heaven fell, yea, they were caught thereby because they kept not the commandments of God. So to their sons whose bodies were as mountains, they also fell. So yeah. there's a lot of other documents outside of the Bible that talk about this stuff. And once again, it's that's fascinating to me that uh, it's kind of uh, propped up by this. And then you have the Greece and, and just the last thing is the Greece and, and Rome mythologies. So the gods and semi-gods of those traditions go under different names, but their behavior is a common denominator. Um, whether the gods are called Zeus or Jupiter, Poseidon, Neptune, Aphrodite or Venus, Eros or Cupid, they have sex orgies, promiscuous, uh, they have a, a tendency towards cruelty and violence, um, and so are their offspring. Um, and then if you think about the way that the, those... Um, those gods are you could think of them as the fallen angels right um act and and uh procreate with humans um and have these half human half god children that story kind of lines up with what we're talking about here too right so there's a lot of fascinating things that cross yeah cross -pollinate each other and there's also the epic of gilgamesh a similar mythology uh watchers coming from space but the last fresh thing that i just remembered was that when jesus was crucified and his three days in the tomb before he rose again and went to heaven ooh, mm -hmm. up into the sky like an alien abduction during that time it said uh in the bible it says he descended into hell first peter 3 18 to 20 says uh for christ hath once suffered our sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison and there was some translation about that because preach doesn't mean to give a sermon it means to announce yep. and he announced to the spirits which translates the angels or the fallen ones who are in tartarus he went to hell to announce something to those spirits in that prison um when once the long while well, the ark was I don't know what he announced, but there's more. He basically here. announced that the, the the his victory was a triumphant lap. Basically, he was going mm -hmm. to let them know that I have basically won over evil for the son for the sons of of God, sons of man, to cleanse their souls. Blah 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 blah. And what's weird is the word demon in Greek is daimon and comes from the root word meaning knowledge or intelligence. And these demons were fallen angels. That's what they did. They came and they shared their knowledge and intelligence that they shouldn't have. Pretty weird, right? It's not necessarily a devil. Like yeah, that's I'm, that's I'm, the yeah. Greek translation, you know? Yep. And uh, I know we're just kind of throwing in like little little last things because I we got to jump off soon. But uh, I have one last them. thing just to sum it up. Uh, hold on, me too. Me too, though. Um, so we were talking about Tartarus, which I think that's where God, uh, Jesus descended into to basically t announce, pronounce to the fallen angels that um, the, uh, his victory. Um, when Homer used the word Tartarus, he gave it the meaning of subterranean. 
So I thought that was interesting when you think about it in a reference to Hollow Earth. So anyway, just one last yeah. little thing. Yeah, and the Go fact ahead. that those guys were writing about it. Like, people have known about this for a long time. This isn't something QAnoners made up when Trump became president. You know, this is... No, this is a whole book. This is stuff we don't know about what we do know. But I love the way it summed it up at the end of this book. And this is basically what we were talking about earlier about the global religion it says uh ancient sumerian records tell of gods descending from the stars and fertilizing their ancestors uh this interbreeding of gods from heaven and women from earth is supposed to have produced the first men upon the earth uh, also the native inhabitants of molecula and the new hebrides new hebrides believe that the first race of men were direct descendants of the sons of heaven there's just different cultures with the same belief. The Incas held that they were the descendants of the sons of the sun, like the S-U-N, sons of the S-U-N sun. Mm-hmm. The Tutans, the Tutans claimed that their ancestors came with the flying Wanin, Wanin, W-A-N-E-N. Some of the South Sea Islanders traced their ancestry to one of the gods of heaven who visited them in an enormous gleaming egg. The Koreans believed a heavenly king, Hwanin, sent his son, Hwanung, to earth, married an earth woman, gave birth to Tangun Wagam. It was he who was supposed to have welded all the primitive tribes together into one kingdom, the twelve tribes of Israel. And the ancient tradition of Tango Fudoki in Japan tells the story of the island child. The only difference here is that it was a man from earth and a maiden from heaven that came together in marriage and spent their time in heaven and not on earth. So they flipped it up. I mean, they got more. India comes from the Mahabharata and other ancient Sanskrit texts, which tell of gods begetting children with women of earth, and how these children inherited the supernatural skills and learning of their fathers. A similar mythology is found in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Watchers from outer space come into planet Earth and producing giants. Last one, an early Persian myth tells that before the coming of Zoroaster, demons had corrupted the earth and allied themselves with women so it's not even just the bible it's like the same story again all over just like the flood and blah 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 and this and that and yada yada so what do you think what's your conclusion basically the question of this book was are the ufos that we see now the return of these watchers the return of god if they have indeed come from heaven and this happened are they coming back from the heavens and checking up on us? I don't know. That's my, that's, that's <laughs> what I think. <laughs> I it don't seem, know. It seems I like you would know, know, like, nah, that's obviously horse shit, but it's like the more you look into it, it's like, man, it doesn't seem to get proven wrong though. No, it's. I, I think that it is extremely interesting. I think I'm going to keep watching what happens. And I think that as I'm watching what happens and what unfolds going forward, that it's nice to have this kind of knowledge about the past and all these stories from the ancients to, to give me a certain perspective about what I'm seeing. That's yeah. what I think. On one hand, it might be Russia. And on the other hand, it might be God, fallen angels our ancestors right or we could maybe interpret these texts differently that we're reading based on future observations of crazy phenomenon of these extraterrestrials uh as they reveal themselves more to us and that this stuff will start to make more sense to us when that happens and we interpret this a different way so i don't know i hope i can stay alive long enough to see everything that i don't want to die early like before they just before like aliens come out and be like all right we're here but i died the yeah year yeah before. i don't i don't i don't want to miss that would be such bullshit yeah that would be, that, that would, would be so fucked be so fucked up like i don't want to miss but then it. but then what if the aliens revealing themselves are the end of time then this can be a really rough time on earth after that do you still want to be here for that well considering that i would almost be dead i probably wouldn't care i'd be like all right i've seen enough what if it's like 2022 Oh, no, I'm in it for the long haul, man. You're just going to run through it. You're just going to run through the hell on earth, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm equipped, man. I'm just going to go back and read the Bible and be like, I know what to do here. You're not going to get go. me. You're not going to get, I got the knowledge. <laughs> I'm going to turn into a super crazy Christian guy. 
I went to Crowley High, Catholic <laughs> High, or whatever the fuck. I got you. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, man, I thought it was uh, it was a nice little jumping off point for all this stuff, and um, it was nice to go back and look at all some of these old Bible verses and like look at them from a conspiratorial view. I know. Rather than like, oh God, I got to learn this shit for Sunday school, so I really don't give a fuck about any. Yeah, of it. yeah. And Jesus multiplying bullshit. fish, dude. Jesus yeah. multiplying fish and all the stuff he did. If he had the supernatural skills, all these texts say that their sons inherited. Why, you know, why not? Yeah, you know no, saying? for sure. Like, That's what I'm saying. Like, it makes you think about all the stuff in the Bible a different way. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, until I next time. Was, yeah, man. Till next time. So uh, we'll catch up, I guess, uh, tomorrow and figure out when we're when we're doing what we're doing and when we're doing it next. And we, yeah, I know you sent me that book. I don't know if you want to wait. And that's pretty substantial. Some that. That's yeah. not something we're going to be able to do. Like, yeah, I know. We got to break that one off. <laughs> let's just get a couple articles, man. Make an easy one next. Sure. Let's do that. We can do one Wednesday morning like old times because like this is Sunday times. night. This is we usually record Wednesday morning. This is Sunday night. My schedule's been fucked, people. I've been off of uh, work and on paternity leave and traveling, so yeah. I'm just going to get back to normal. Yeah, Dylan's been busy, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically done with that Son of a Gun record, and it sounds real crispy, dude. The bass guitar, okay. I got the fret noise coming out. Parallel compression, it's all behind it. Dude, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Snare is still awesome. not perfect, but it's way better, and I'm like happier about it. So I think it'll be fun. Good man. Well, this is all all good experience for you. <laughs> Just oh, remember that as you get frustrated. Oh, okay. I couldn't see the dick. That's awesome. <laughs> you got a dick hanging behind you the whole time. <laughs> a big yeah. stone one. A little stone one, not a big. A little stone dick. That's how good I was. I didn't even think about it the whole time. I waited till the end. That was perfect. I kind of assumed it was back there, but I was like, mm, maybe his arm is covered. <laughs>